Quick shout out to my Patreons who keep this channel going. You can join my Patreon down in the description below. What's well, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're interacting to the 12th episode of Lock Rising Season 2. This one's titled The Gold of the Kunye. So yes, uh, we are finally going to be confronting uh, the source of the world's gold. Uh, well, at least what gives it to the monsters and such, so that we as players, or adventurers I should say, uh, can actually uh, earn money from doing raids and such, and how the economy of the world works, essentially. Which is a very interesting concept, just in general, to explore. And another reason why I love Log Horizon is just how it utilizes its game world setting and integrates it into what it actually mechanically does with regards to how it interacts with adventurers and the people of the land, everything like that. Like, it genuinely is kind of very well thought out and more in depth than I would expect from a typical isekai type story. So, it's been. Very refreshing, and again, it just makes me question, why didn't I watch this series sooner? Like, I I really like this type of story when I was first getting into anime, and when I was really starting to binge it in, like, 2017, 2018. Why, I even had this on my list, I was like, oh, this could be an interesting watch, and then I just never did, and I have no idea why. I have absolutely no idea why I didn't watch this, but I'm so glad I am now. Um, but yeah, uh, we were... Um, reformulating our plan on how we deal with this boss zone and we essentially uh, worked out uh, by uh, immobilizing the boss with uh, his first phase just by uh, doing enough damage to the point where he converts into his next phase where he can potentially heal and then he'll revert back to when he can attack. Um, we use uh, that opportunity uh, to break through the gates where the other two raid bosses would converge in to go off and chase after the one boss that we think would be the weakest and the easiest to take down. Um, so that we can really focus our attacks on them and, and deal with one, then move on to the next, and then move on with the final one and, be, and defeat all three in detail. So instead of attacking all three at once, we're defeating in detail, as like Napoleon would probably prefer you to do as well. <laughs> um, it's just It just makes perfect sense. Um, however, uh, the Vanguard do show up, the Vanguard being... Um, what we call it? The main bosses, um, minion things that when you hit them, uh, it essentially heals uh, the boss himself. Uh, so the plan is to kite them, and Demacus ends up uh, drawing all of them towards himself, and then grabs Shiroe and sprints off down the chamber, potentially too fast to the point where they might even give up after him. Uh, but he seems to have timed it pretty well and knows this, and basically throws Shiroe, uh, Shiroe to the. Um, uh, to the end zone essentially and the goal that he's been trying to get to and they kind of have a very awkward conversation but I think an understanding uh, before Demacus actually continues to take the mobs and take them away and lead them back to the brave room so that they can continue the raid uh, but Shiroe now has his opportunity to um, yeah talk to Kinjo uh, the, the raid final boss that's there and I guess find out what the hell we're going to do from here because we're alone versus a raid boss. Not a lot we can do if we have to fight, so hopefully we don't have to fight and we can go through diplomatically with our reasoning for gaining access to the world's gold. I guess we'll see, though, uh, what ends up happening. But Anyway, uh, we're going to load the episode up here because I'm very excited for this. Um, and yeah, it's going to get a bit late, so I can't want to get all... I want to get the double episodes done because I don't want to be delayed on these because I was delayed on World Trigger, I was delayed on Symphogigi. I'm not going to be delayed on Lock Rise as well just for that fact so anyway um as per usual these are time-based format actions here on youtube if you want to see the full patreon picture you can go to my patreon down description below four pounds a month gets you access to all patreon picture actions i do on the channel which is everything from the current seasonal lineup as well as patreon request shows such as log horizons here um we also have movie actions and tomorrow we'll be doing the i want to eat your pancreas movie as voted on by my patrons uh we do a monthly movie poll in the first week of every month and that's how we decide what movie we end up watching so come join the uh, first week of July, and you'll get to have your say in that poll as well. Uh, but here on YouTube, uh, like I said, it's timer-based, so bottom left of the screen you'll see a timer for the episode. I count down 3 to 1 play. Then I'll play side episode, I side episode, and we should be in sync. I'm watching this one on Crunchyroll, since they're the ones I can link viewers here in the UK, which is odd because I think Season 1 and Season 3 are on Funimation, but Season 2 is on Crunchyroll. Don't ask me why it's like that, it just is. Um, but yeah, Crunchyroll players better anyway, let's be real. Uh, haven't tried the new beta that apparently all of the US is now using. I don't know when they're going to roll that out to Europe, UK specifically, I guess, but 
yeah, apparently a lot of the website's not really that great, but again, it's changed, so even people who are making very minor complaints are probably just doing it because they don't like change, but I, I'm sure there's plenty of real complaints on there as well, but anyway. Um, you can use the screen flash on my face, the mic, all this part of my headset to tell while the scenes are transitioning. That should help you sync this up as well. And with all that said, let's get into the first of this week's episodes of Lock Horizon, shall we? In three, two, one, play. Here we are, face to face. Uru of the Ninth Garden. Oof. Mm hmm. Okay. Sweating. Yeah. Nice. It's a boss down. Next one. Damicus. <laughs> Still running around, yep. OP time, all right. I love this song, I really do. I mean, you kind of have to after having, like, at the end of this, it's going to be, what, 50 episodes with this same OP song? <laughs> kind of have to like it at that point, right? Time to have a conversation. A born and return here, interesting. Hmm. The mechanics of the game. Mm-hmm. Oh, can you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm 
Right. Part of the law has been lost, huh? Don't know. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> Don't go reaching into your pockets. Oh, what the hell's this? What? Mm hmm. What's going on? Hmm. Right. Ah, okay. Okay. Mm hmm. So give it to the server. Wow. Wow. It's a lot. Just to buy all zones. Hmm. Bit of inequality. Okay. Where will the people of the land live when the adventurers buy up all the lands? Mm hmm. Okay. How they go? It went well. <laughs> that one's just sucked in, just like. Eh. <laughs> Now, to so split the loot. Oh, God. The worst part. I have the curse. Fire eating ice. Blade. Over a scale. Uh. 
Okay. Have fun doing this. Moon Blossom Talisman. Okay, I'll read up on that. Okay, that's going to be going Shirei. Hmm. <laughs> of course he did. Just in stat boost, yeah. Indeed. Your name's on that. <laughs> Your name's there as well first. It's pretty awesome. Nice. What is going on? What is happening? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh boy. Cut down reading. It's the first time we've really spent time with these characters, I suppose. Since the beginning. Yep. Yep. <laughs> well, she's super excited as well, so. Maybe she's just she wrote with Pure Ray rather than. Hmm, no, it's good, but whatever. I guess. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> the hell 
Uh, it's been a while since we've seen you. Okay, so staying around, okay. Mm hmm. <laughs> Why this is so dismissive? That impression, that impression. Hmm. <laughs> They go. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> interesting. Sure. I'm sure there are more hints along the way, but that kind of fits. Hmm. Yeah. Hello. Kazuko? Level 97, wow. That's impressive. Level 68. Ninety. <laughs> free. Ninety bud. Moon sink, okay. Level thirty six. Hmm. Level forty one human. Oh, they're all in that plot Poiden, okay. There's Intix. She is. Hmm. Okay. Saying up something. <laughs> K 
KR, who we just saw. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no boy. A mess. That's Kosky. <laughs> Where is Kowski though? Seriously. Just a bit. Yeah. Let's let that sort itself out. There she is. <laughs> uh. hmm. She went through her own trial and she came out better because of it. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right, good episode. We've wrapped that up. So now we're now free to go on to whatever the next arc of the story is, I guess. We've set up... Okay, so KR, they mentioned Tea Party, like how it was always like that in the Tea Party, and KR said this. So I'm going to assume KR was a member of the Tea Party, and they're now potentially villainous to us and our intentions, or they seem to have a keen interest in our intentions. And this Intix seems to be almost like a leader of sorts underneath, um, I forget her name, uh, but from Plank Wyden. I forget the girl's name, but she, uh, the one that showed up right at the end of season one. I forget her name. All right, good episode. Very, very good episode. So we're actually just buying all the land of Yamato and then giving it... Yeah, we're buying all the land and then giving it to Yamato. Putting in the server's name to the eventually dissolve all property limits as they were in the game. So again, we're even taking effects so that the game world is diminishing and being replaced with just the world that this is. Moving the arbitrary property laws from the game in terms of our own territory and putting that responsibility back into the people of the land 
like not only the people of land, um, but also adventurers. So that it's regulated by them rather than an arbitrary server identity, essentially. Because it's a good point. Adventurers could eventually buy out most of the lands that people land call home, where they're going to live, right? I doubt people would ever own quite enough money, but they, but the people land would feel so unwelcome anywhere they went that they'd probably just run out of options eventually. So, very, very interesting. And that will uh, free up uh, the round table's budget, so they don't have to spend it on like buying like guild buildings and such. Um, so that's going to be very, very helpful. Um, yeah. It's a good conclusion to that little mini arc. Now, uh, next episode is titled, uh, A Sweet Trap. Is it 2.14 A Sweet Trap? Or is it, no, it's just called A Sweet Trap. Um, oh, I see why it's called uh, 2.14 A Sweet Trap. It's, um, it's, uh, Valentine's Day. Got it. Um, also, is a sweet trap meant to be referring to um, Tetra because of the revolution? We just got that at time as well. I mean, that seems to make a degree of sense. I mean, I'm looking at the Crunchyroll um, <clears throat> thumbnail for it. Episode 13 is sweet trap, and it has Tetra there. It's like, yeah. So, yeah. Um, does that mean that this is going to be a more chilled, relaxed episode before we get into the next arc? Or does that mean we're going straight into the next arc and it revolves around Valentine's Day? That's a question. Hmm. I wonder. I wonder. I, I need to look up this Moon Talisman, actually, as well. Oh, <coughs> oh boys uh, my throat has given up uh, so let's just read that moon talisman real quick just to see what it actually gives us um, there it is so the moon blossom talisman uh, reduces loss of experience points when a player revives after dying okay hmm I wonder if that has an impact on Hmm, I wonder if that has an effect on the the loss of memories and stuff through death. I wonder about that. Uh, strength is defensive magic as well as mental attribute offensive magic. Do we use a lot of mental attribute stuff? I wonder. Good to know, though. Uh, but the Legend of the Moon Blossom Talisman. A phantasm class talisman carved in the image of a flower that, according to legend, blooms with the moon's cycle. It is said to bless souls in transit. Now, as we know, the flavor text is becoming more real, so the fact that we have something that uh, blooms it with the moon's cycle and blesses souls in transit, I expect that to become relevant eventually as well. I expect there to be some relevancy to that uh, text. Oh, speaking of text, we've got to figure out what the fuck's going on with Krusty and like actually getting communication with uh, uh, the girl that uh, w watched it happen and contact Shiro Ray and find out what the hell's going on. Um, because, yeah, that's a big deal. If we're just going to go into a, um, like, a, um, chill Valentine's Day episode straight after that, then, like, what's happening with Krusty? Is just no one going to mention it? Or, like, what? Because that happened, and then just, like, we kind of just, just been on the back burner whilst we figure out, uh, the Akihabara raid, as well as this raid, so... Yeah, we kind of need to address, like, is Krusty actually dead, or, like, what's happened to Krusty at this point, so... Yeah. Hopefully we'll get to that point uh, next... Well, maybe we won't next episode. Maybe we will. I guess we'll see uh, what ends up happening. So, Anyway, that's going to do it for today, guys. Thank you, thank you, everyone, for watching. Hope you enjoyed that one as per usual. Leave a like if you did, as well as your comments what you thought of the episode. Don't forget to hit subscribe. We're going to be doing another episode straight after this, um, because we do a double episodes on this. Uh, but don't forget to hit subscribe for next week's episodes, as well as the rest of the Spring 2021 lineup you can find on the channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time. See you guys later.